Hello, my name's Lee Steele. I'm a ceramic artist based in the East Yorkshire of England. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been interested in rust probably since I've worked at my father's garage. Uh, looking at the, the rust uh, on cars, etc. I worked offshore, which was a lot of rust out there. And then I worked in secure units teaching artists um, therapies. So other influences. Alberto Bustos work is I find quite fascinated. He's very interested in nature and the natural world. And this is works very much how the natural world then takes over uh, post-industrial sites or objects or what man mind, what mankind has done to the environment. It's almost uh, like there's work where organic shapes and forms will come from concrete block or uh, other man-made structures and I'm very interested to see how he makes ceramics look like metal, stone, all sorts of paper. Very interesting work. When I was at college, uh, H.R. Geiger was a big influence on me too. Uh, I love his work um, uh, on the Aliens films and his biomechanical dreamscapes, his art, um, which are very much Fascinated me the way that uh, they're interlinked with the mechanical. Uh, William Senna is another somebody else who uh, I've come across online as well, the Facebook this time. Uh, his work is actually wood, painted to look like metal, but he's taking his influences from mountains uh, uh, and textures from stone from his native Switzerland, which is a mash and gather of all sorts that really interests me there. I love the way that all these three artists, the sort of one thing looks like one thing, but it's obviously something else like ceramics is, is metal and wood is stone. And uh, Mr. Geiger is just out on his own league there anyway. Um, so influences particularly to my work, current work is rust. I love the, the, the textures, the fascinating colors, how rust works. Uh, and can interact with other materials and uh, corrode in different ways, depending on the environment. Uh, I did a little course at Manchester University, an online course to do with uh, what is rust and corrosion. That was fascinating. It has a lot to do with oil rigs and how things to corrode and a lot of things how to stop rust. But still, it was fascinating how rust of different sorts and different environments, what, how that works. Uh, so through my work through lockdown, um, I've been looking at links, chain links and rusty chain links, I suppose. It came about, I had COVID and I couldn't do a great deal and I was down the studio um, and there was a big lump of clay starting to go hard and I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't recycle it, I didn't have the strength. But I could carve, so I started to carve it. And the first few attempts um, ended with things blowing up. Uh, like the one on the left, but I learned from that and make it thinner and make it less more rusty and did other experiments to do with uh, iron filings in and on clay uh, in different ways and amounts. Uh, interestingly, the picture on the right uh, looks a bit different to the smaller picture it's with due to the ongoing calcification, not calcification, oxidization of um, the iron filings, so it actually changed colour over a few months, which was really interesting. I sort of need to work on sort of stopping that from happening, really. So, some interesting times down the studio. Uh, my professional development, what I've been doing. Well, I've got, I've had several um, exhibitions I've been involved with. Uh, one was in in uh, in London, in the Boomer Gallery, when I remember it. Uh, and then I have another one just about to start in Sheffield at the Frontier Gallery. Uh, so I've got them. Uh, so I've used um, Creator Space. I've got the information off that um, about different and other exhibitions that I'm applying to. And I actually got into a couple more as well. I've been to see a few exhibitions. I went to um, Grayson Perry's um, Free Therapy Years in New York. Um, I also was on an online uh, is it? 
It's called A Conversation with Grayson Perry through Skype. Um, I was invited by York Gallery to attend that one where you could type. He's been interviewed and you could type uh, questions to him. That was interesting. Again, about his advertising, his uh, pre-therapy years exhibition. I uh, also went to York Gallery, looked at their exhibition, which is fascinating. I had to keep my hands in my pockets as textures are wonderful. I've uh, been to Art in Protest Gallery, uh, according to McGee. Uh, Frontier Gallery, gallery obviously, uh, Acorn Gallery, Ferrens and the Humber Street Gallery. I also attended uh, Root and Branches, another exhibition I went to in Sheffield. Uh, social media, I've got Lee Steel Ceramic Artist Facebook page and also about 12 other pages I'm on to do with art and uh, sculpture and the post on there as well. Uh, Instagram, I've got well, only about 400 on the on the Facebook. Instagram, I've got another 400 there. Uh, Instagram page, which gets quite a few comments from. The best one I've found is LinkedIn, where I've got uh, over 4,000 people I've linked in with, mostly within the art industry from all over the world. Uh, lots in this country, New York, um, Monaco, you name it, all over the place. So it's a really interesting tool is LinkedIn. And I get a lot of feedback through pictures I post of my later work and you can sort of, it's a good way of um, determining if work's going right. Uh, if you've not been able to get into your work out there into galleries, I find measuring how much feedback I get is very useful. Uh, Twitter, of course, I'm on there as well. Um, Northern Potters have joined recently. That's, I've only just joined that, but it seems to be, could be really interesting, really a good uh, place for information, exhibitions and all sorts of contacts. Other things I've been doing, I've got a work, good working relationship with a photographer. Uh, he's doing product shoots of my work now. Rather than me attempting to do a mediocre job, he does a fantastic job of that. Uh, I don't think I missed anything on this page. And brings me to the world of ceramics in general. I found it's really quite interesting. It's, it's, it's um, something you don't really get with other art forms. Um, mainly because you can go down to the local supermarket and pick up a coffee cup for £2.50 or nip into a gallery and pay £50 for um, a bespoke, wonderful coffee mug, especially if it's a named artist, you can pay a lot more for. Uh, so I think some people see something that's been created uh, in sale. That's a, that's a lot of money for that. But it's taken weeks of work, possibly, um, and even longer in the um, research of something like that. So it's, it's sort of interesting when people buy something off an artist like Grayson Perry. They're not just buying that particular pot, they're buying a piece of the artist, a piece of his soul, if you like. So um, I always think if uh, Mr. Perry had a, went down the local market with a stall and didn't use his name, he would sell stuff. But I don't think he'd get the same kind of money that he does for his work presently. So I've learned a bit from that and it's very important I'm thinking where I exhibit my work. My work wouldn't sit well in a nice little country gallery next to nice pretty landscapes and the pretty bunnies sculptures. Uh, so I think I have to really look at where um, my gallery is and the type of gallery it is and it's other work in there. Uh, looking at other places, I've got my work on Art Finder um, and through my LinkedIn contacts, um, I got into uh, John Lincoln's Fine Art. He contacted me and asked if I'd like to join. It's, it's an online, it's, it's another online gallery, but it's based in Dallas, I believe. Um, so I checked him out and I'm on there too. And I'm looking for other ways of uh, getting my work out there just to be seen, if nothing else, I think. Uh, so, right. In the future, I've been having an initial chat to the Art of Protest Gallery in York about a solo exhibition next year. Uh, they're quite interested in my work. I've uh, been along to look at their uh, gallery and I think my work would fit in there quite well. Uh, they all seem very knowledgeable and um, I heard them chatting to customers, customers that about work that was already in there. And I quite like their approach of selling and in being very informative and involving the customer. Uh, so that's still ongoing. So um, I'm sure you'll tell me if I've missed great lumps and I've got the total wrong end of the stick from this.
PowerPoint for this um, module three, um, but I'm sure you'll let me know and I can redo things as we go along. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with my rambling. Thank you.